Hello and welcome to our lab on capacitance. Now today we're going to be charging and discharging a capacitor. And so let me sort of tell you some of the uh, terms associated with that. First of all, whenever you have a capacitor, and let me draw a schematic diagram of what the capacitor looks like. You have a wire, a straight down line, and then it'll sort of a curved line like this. And when I draw that, that means that the curved line is my negative side, and the straight line, that's my positive side. And so whenever you're doing um, experiments using electrolytic capacitors, and it's telling you which side is negative, which side is positive, it's very important to, uh, to make note of that convention. Because if you get a capacitor turned around the wrong way, it becomes a tiny firecracker. And so we want to be careful with the setup in today's lab. If you're not sure, if you have your capacitor turned correctly and this side is facing the negative terminal of the battery, this side is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, uh, either side through the resistor, then bad things will happen again. So check with your lab instructor uh, to make sure before you actually connect it to the battery. So we have this little electrical component called the capacitor. It's C for capacitor. And its unit is the farad. And so you might say my capacitance, I have a capacitance, so my capacitance is equal to maybe 30 micro farads. And the micro there means times 10 to the negative sixth. And so uh, that would be 30 times 10 to the negative sixth farads. And so that would be a typical capacitor value. Now, the relationship bet between capacitance and voltage goes like this. The uh, capacitance multiplied by the voltage across the capacitor, and this is something we can measure with a meter, this voltage is equal to the charge on the capacitor, Q. And so you're probably familiar with Q. Q is the amount of charge all right, stored on the plates of this capacitor. And so a, a capacitor has a certain capacitance based on the amount of charge that it can hold for a certain voltage. Now if that capacitance is a fixed value, all right, it has some sort of dielectric in here or whatever, and it's a certain capacitance. This is a 30 microfarad capacitor. That doesn't change. That's a constant. And so you can see that as you begin to put charge on the capacitor, its voltage is going to go up. If charge is removed from the capacitor, its voltage will be decreased. So there's a direct relationship between voltage and charge. Now the charge on a capacitor can't be instantaneously put on. Right? The charge has to, um, it takes time for a capacitor to charge. And so what we want to do is look at some uh, equations that model the charge and the discharge of this electrical component called the capacitor. So if I start charging the capacitor, well, I don't have an instrument that I can use to, uh, to measure charge. But I have readily available an instrument to measure the voltage. And remember, the voltage is directly related to the charge. And so as the capacitor charges, let's say we start here at zero volts. And up here, we've got some, uh, some maximum voltage. Let's say this is the voltage of our battery. If we have a one and a half volt battery, this is the maximum voltage that our capacitor can charge to, one and a half volts. Surface, maybe it's a six volt battery. Okay, so this will be our maximum possible charge. And so as it begins to charge, it charges rather quickly at first. But as time goes on, that charging rate decreases, and eventually, it will get really close to the battery voltage, maybe not all the way there. But this is what the charging curve will sort of look like, and we'll be able to plot that in lab. But the equation that models a charging capacitor is this one. The voltage at any time across the capacitor, as we measure it, is equal to some percentage of the battery voltage. So the battery voltage, and we actually use this equation to model it, 1 minus E to the negative 1 over RC times T, time. And so, we'll, we'll examine this stuff in the uh, exponent first, but 
there's, here's time. So we're plotting this versus time. And so as time, let's check our initial conditions. When time is equal to zero, then e, then this whole term goes to zero. So e to the zero power is pretty much what anything to the zero power is, which is one. And so one minus one gives us zero in this term. Zero times the battery voltage is zero. So when time is equal to zero, that means the voltage across the capacitor is equal to zero, which is why we want to start with a discharged capacitor so that this model works. But now as time gets very large, maybe goes toward infinity, this will be a very large negative term. So this is this minus sign. So as t goes to infinity, this goes to negative infinity. And so anything to a negative large number is actually a small number. So as, as this goes to uh, e to the negative infinity is actually pretty real close to zero. So one minus zero is one. Battery voltage minus one is equal to the battery voltage. So you can see as time goes to infinity, our capacitor voltage, okay, we're plotting uh, up here, this is, this is the uh, capacitor voltage versus time. That's the name of this plot. Then we're approaching the battery voltage as T equals infinity. So this is a charging capacitor. Now the equation's a little bit different for a discharging capacitor. So let's look at a discharging capacitor. Now when we start to discharge our capacitor, we're going to start with a capacitor that's fully charged. So it's going to be at the battery voltage. So that's where we want to start. And it's going to start discharging rather quickly. But as it loses charge, that force decreases. And so it begins to uh, charge at a less and less uh, quick rate here. And so the voltage across our capacitor is modeled like this. Again, it's some percentage of the battery voltage, but this time it's time, you know, so the one minus is just E to the negative one over RC times time. And so as we model that, you can see that when time is equal to zero, E to the zero power is one, and so VB times one is equal to VB. So when time is equal to zero, our, bat our voltage across the capacitor is the battery voltage. But as time goes on to infinity, this becomes E to the negative infinity or zero, and so it approaches zero as time progresses. And so these are the equations that we use to model the charge and discharge of a capacitor. So let's take a look at this in the exponent here again. We have one negative one over RC times T. Let's examine these terms. The uh, R in here is the resistance of the circuit. And in today's lab, you're going to have a resistance of 1,000 ohms, ohms being the unit of resistance. Okay, That's a given. But you're not going to know what C is. And so the way that you'll determine, find out what C is, is once you have your data, you're going to plot it, and this is called a natural exponential curve. You're going to plot your data in LogaPro with a natural exponential curve fit. That curve fit has certain parameters. It has a, it's a to the times e to the negative, or c t plus b. So your parameters a, b, and c sort of describe the curve fit. So this parameter that's to the exponent of the E, I think Galaga Pro calls it C. Don't get that confused with capacitance C. It's just a parameter, A, B, it's a, B or C. It's not capacitance. But that parameter, you see, is equal to 1 over RC, where R is resistance, C is capacitance. And so once Galaga Pro gives you that parameter, then if you know what R is, you set that parameter equal to 1 over RC, and then you know what R is, you know what the parameter is, LogaPro gives it to you, solve for C. That's an accurate way of determining the capacitance of a circuit. Um, because capacitors will have their value printed on them, but usually capacitor values are wildly inaccurate. Uh, 25, 30% is not irregular for a, an, as far as the accuracy of the, uh, the, the printed capacitance goes. And so, if you don't have a meter that reads capacitance, which we don't, then you have to 
do this in order to determine the exact or the very a more precise or more accurate capacitance of the circuit. So you do this experiment and then solve for C the capacitance and now you've got an idea of the capacitor that you have. And so you'll be doing this with two different capacitors. So you'll be discharging two capacitors, determining the curve fit parameters, and then um, so you'll have two capacitors where you actually know the capacitance. And then we're going to use those two capacitors and say, well, what do we predict would be the total capacitance of a circuit if we put those in series or parallel? So let me draw this out. You have two capacitors. And let's say we put them in series. Series means that one follows the other. There's only one path through here. So it's a serial connection series, one after the other. And so let's call this CA and CB, capacitor A and capacitor B. Well, um, theory predicts that the total capacitance, C total, is going to be equal to, okay, and uh, let me just make some room and write it out like this. It works like this. 1 over C total is equal to 1 over CA plus, I guess I should keep that a lowercase a, 1 over CB plus and as many capacitors as you have in series, that formula holds true. So you should be able to predict based on what CA and CB are from when you determine those values from the curve fit, what our total capacitance is when you place them in series. And you'll actually put the two capacitors in series electronically and do the experiment again. You do the discharge experiment again, curve fit it, and you'll get a value for your total capacitance, and then say, was it close to my predicted value? Hopefully, yes. Um, there's another way that you can connect those capacitors together, and that is in parallel. And again, I won't go into the theory behind the equation. You'll do that in lecture. But if you have a parallel connection, and say you put one capacitor up here, and another capacitor down there. We'll call this capacitor A. This is capacitor B. And the positive ends are connected together. The negative ends are connected together. Okay, But there's a choice. You can branch and go either way through a capacitor. So this is, these are said to be in parallel instead of in series. And so theory predicts Okay, and you'll talk about this theory in class, that the total capacitance is equal to the sum of CA plus CB plus any number of capacitors that come afterward. And so um, what you'll do is you make a prediction of what the series, uh, what this parallel total capacitance is, and then design the circuit. You put these two capacitors in parallel and, you know, plot a uh, voltage versus time curve, fit the exponential to it, determine the capacitance of that circuit, and then see, did that work out? Is it really just the sum of these two capacitors? You'll be able to determine that experimentally. All right, let's take a closer look at our apparatus. First of all, I have a lot of alligator cables that I can use to make my connections with. I have a battery, in this case, this is a six volt lantern battery. And on top, you can see where the positive terminal and the negative terminal are. It's labeled positive, six, and negative. Um, you may have a different battery, but be sure to identify right off the bat what your positive and negative terminals are. This is our resistor. It's a, just a large ceramic resistor, and it's rated at one kilo ohm, or 1,000 ohms. And last of all, our capacitors. And uh, these are the capacitors. And you see on one side of the capacitor, there is this sort of a dashed line. I don't know if we can focus on that, but it's a dashed line. That indicates that this is the negative side. The other side is just plain. That's the, where the positive side is. So it's sort of a strip with a little negative sign, a little bubble almost. That's the negative side of the capacitor. The same with this one. There is a... Um, there's a little strip there indicating the negative side of the capacitor. The other side is just blank. So this terminal is negative. So when I make that connection, 
I want to make sure that I take this negative terminal and go from that to the negative terminal of the battery. If I get this turned around, then that's actually very dangerous. This, this could heat up and explode. So you have, to, um, you have to be careful that you get it oriented the right direction. Now, as far as the rest of the circuit, according to our circuit diagram, we want to put this in series with the resistor. And so I've, I'll do that. I'll put it from this side to the resistor. And then the resistor connects to the positive terminal of the battery. And so I'll do that. I'll connect it to the positive terminal of the battery. Well, actually, I won't yet because, uh, well, let me go ahead and do it. And so what's happening here is I'm charging this, I'm charging this capacitor. As soon as I connected that, the capacitor started to charge. Now, I want to look at the voltage across that capacitor. And so I have this vernier differential voltage supply. It goes up to 6 volts, so I'm okay with my 6-volt battery. And so here's positive and negative. This is the negative terminal of the battery, so let me trace it down here to the capacitor, and I'll clip it on to that alligator, alligator lead right there. Now, the, and this is the negative side of the capacitor. Now, the positive side here, I'll clip this positive terminal of the voltage, of the voltage, differential voltage probe over to there. Now, if there's voltage on that capacitor, this is reading it. And you can see down here in the lower corner, it's around 6 volts. So, when I collect, I want to discharge the capacitor. The way I discharge the capacitor is I disconnect the battery terminals and I put them together. This takes the battery out of the loop and the capacitor begins to discharge. So let's do that while we'll watch it on the screen. I'm going to hit collect. And I'll take this off and I will clip them together. And our capacitor is discharging. And you see it makes that exponential curve. If I wanted to charge it now, I would just reconnect my battery terminals. And I'm charging the battery now. And so, um, so now I've got this beautiful discharge curve. And I can go into my curve fit. And I can uh, fit that to a natural exponential. And it's going to give me my parameters. And the parameter that's in the exponent of, uh, of E, then the power of E, is going, to, uh, is going to give me information about the capacitance of the circuit. And so is this, I can do this with the, with the other capacitor. I can do it with two capacitors in series. I can use my alligators to connect these in series. I can get creative and connect these in, in parallel with each other. Kind of put these negative ends together and clip them with one of your little leads. Put them in parallel. All right, so these are parallel capacitors here. And then uh, make sure your negatives are on the same side and toward the battery. And so that's it. I can look at different configurations of these two capacitors and accurately determine their capacitance using Logger Pro's curve fitting feature.